Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about the powerful benefits of stinging nettle for inflammation, pain relief, and even blood sugar regulation for diabetics. There is actually a ton of research on the topic, and we're going to dive into the research together, and I'll give you practical ways for you to leverage that powerful plant on your day-to-day. -day. So let's get started. The first body of research I wanted to share with you is a study from the UK. 18 self-reported patients said they used stinging nettle as a way to reduce joint pain. 17 patients out of 18 actually reported that their symptoms were greatly improved with the use of stinging nettle. And actually none of them reported any side effects. Now that study is a little weak because you can still have a placebo effect from using a plant like stinging nettle. And that's why we do have to dive into stronger research to understand if the study actually meant something. The second article is an in vitro study on canine cartilage cells. What they did there is they triggered inflammation to those canine cells using interleukin 1 beta. And after introduction of the inflammation, use stinging nettle to observe the impact on inflammatory markers. When applying stinging nettle to those canine cells, they observed a significant reduction in inflammatory markers. Interestingly, they also noticed that stinging nettle promoted the synthesis of new cartilage as well. Those results demonstrate the powerful anti-inflammatory impact of stinging nettle for dogs. But what you're probably interested in is, what happens if you use it for humans? We already had that study from the UK with 18 participants, but this was not a randomized control study. So again, you can have a psychological aspect that make people think that because they're taking the stinging nettle, it's going to do something and cure them. And that in itself might have a placebo effect that will make them heal, but we don't really know if it's actually because of the plant itself or because of the psychological impact. That's why I picked for you a few studies that demonstrate causation when it comes to using stinging nettle. The first randomized control study that I picked was a study on 27 patients with osteoarthritic pain. Those patients had pain in the thumb or index. They randomly assigned those 27 patients either the stinging nettle or a placebo as a way to have two groups that they could compare and show whether the stinging nettle versus placebo would actually provide benefits. And they did that in two rounds so that all 27 participants would have the stinging nettle treatment as well as the placebo treatment to maximize sample size and conclusive power. And what they observed was a 40% reduction in pain for patients that use stinging nettle versus placebo. And they also observed a 30% decrease in the use of anti-inflammatory or analgesic drugs relative to placebo. So overall, very powerful results from stinging nettle in this study. Now, the way that they used stinging nettle was by applying the stinging nettle to the area of pain twice daily for 30 seconds. The next study is another randomized control study where they used stinging nettle against placebo with 558 patients that were suffering from enlarged prostates. And in that study, the results were quite remarkable. 81% of patients reported improved symptoms relative to only 16% in the placebo group. The prostate symptom score also dropped 40% in the group that used stinging nettle compared to only 10% in the placebo group. They even reported a modest decrease in the prostate size for the group that used the stinging nettle. Pretty powerful. They actually repeated a similar study, this time with just 100 patients and showed significant improvements in the symptoms of enlarged prostate. Now, a side note relative to those studies for patients with an enlarged prostate, the patients actually used stinging nettle orally this time, and in the second study with 100 patients, they were using 600 milligrams twice daily. Now, the last study has to do with the use of stinging nettle for patients with type 2 diabetes. It's actually a meta-analysis, which is basically a study made by researchers where they look at all the randomized control trials that have been done for diabetics 
and combine all of those studies together to get a much more powerful conclusive power. In doing so, they were able to collect data from 401 patients where people used stinging nettle versus placebo. Remarkably, they actually noticed a reduction in blood sugars for the group that used stinging nettle versus placebo. Now, they did not actually see an improvement in insulin levels. However, given the reduction in blood sugar, it seems like they became more insulin sensitive as a result of using the stinging nettle. Now, as you can see from all those studies, stinging nettle really has a powerful impact on reducing inflammation and pain, and even reducing blood sugar for diabetics. Now, how can you implement stinging nettle in your day-to-day? -day? There's actually a few simple ways to do that. My favorite way is actually to drink stinging nettle tea. I personally suffer from back and neck pain, so I drink stinging nettle leaf tea daily, and I really encourage you that you do the same because it's actually pretty delicious. It doesn't contain any caffeine, so you can drink it at night, and it's very soothing and has a very good flavor. You can also use stinging nettle as a supplement. Some companies out there do sell it as a supplement in a pill, or you can just buy the leaf itself at your local healthy store or even online. Now, if you like the content of this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing videos weekly on nutrition and health research, and I'll give you practical ways for you to reach your health and weight goals. I'll see you next time.